And so if you're sitting there thinking, you're like, well, that's easy for you guys to say. You guys yeah. have discipline. You have self-control. You don't understand. My environment is different than you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have all these advantages or, or whatever. Whatever it is that you're sitting, whatever yeah. excuse you're sitting there thinking of, mm-hmm. this, uh, this next read is for you. He says, when scientists analyze people who appear to have tremendous self-control, it turns out that those individuals aren't all that different from those who are struggling. Instead, quote unquote, disciplined people are better at structuring their lives in a way that does not require heroic willpower and self-control. In other words, they spend less time in tempting situations. So yes, perseverance, grit, willpower are essential to success, but the way to improve these qualities is not by wishing you were a more disciplined person, but by creating a more disciplined environment. Self-control is a short-term strategy, not a long-term one. You may be able to resist temptation once or twice, but it's unlikely you can muster the willpower to override your desires every time. Instead of summoning a new dose of willpower whenever you want to do the right thing, your energy would be better spent optimizing your environment. This is the secret to self-control. Make the cues of your good habits obvious and the cues of your bad habits Mm. invisible. I love that. Yeah. Right? Just like you were saying earlier, if the peanut M&Ms are sitting there in my pantry and I know that I want to build better nutrition habits, it doesn't matter how much self-control I have. If that's there day after day after day, eventually I'm going to reach for those peanut M&Ms. Eventually I'm going to consume those. So it's getting rid of all that stuff to not give yourself that cue, that obvious cue of, hey, this is something that I want to take. Mm -hmm. It's, It's a little bit of what we talked about last week, like systems, right, is goals versus systems. Mm -hmm. If you're creating a system that doesn't allow for temptation, that doesn't, or reduces temptation, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's, it's always going to be there, but it, it increases the likelihood of success exponentially. And here's the deal is it's so funny that we're talking about, Hey, you've got to have self-discipline. You got to have self-control. You got to have all these things, but it's not, it's really not that right. It, it is a conscious decision that you make on the front end that takes some willpower. It does, yeah. If you're at the it grocery does. store it's and you're going through the ice cream aisle and you're like, okay, yeah, it's going to take some self-control not to get it then, right? Right. right. But what it, what it does, though, is you're creating this system that's in place that, that protects you from it. And that's what people see as self-discipline. Right. And then once it becomes that habit, now it's just like, I mean, sugar is a prime example. It's one of those things if you go and you and you reduce or remove sugar from your diet for three weeks, the cravings of sugar go away. Mm -hmm. They're not nearly as strong. And that's one thing that like when I'm really successful in my nutrition it's when I when I I remove the temptation of it for three weeks, put myself in a position that I don't have to battle that Mm self-discipline. Okay, and then at that point. The actual willpower, it's really easy to walk by a counter full of cookies at the office. Right. It's really easy to say no to that high starchy food that, you know, a client brings into the office or a vendor. It's re- it's a whole lot easier because now it's a habit because I created a system that allowed me to create a habit of not eating bad yeah. stuff, yeah. stuff that doesn't move me closer to my goal. 